All right, I'm in a mysterious warehouse in the middle of Melbourne and behind me is the Lamborghini Revuelto, the brand's first ever plug-in hybrid, the most powerful Lamborghini ever made, successor to the Aventador and just in general, a very cool vehicle. Now the name means mixed up or scrambled, which is a clever nod to the car's powertrain, combining a 6.5 litre naturally aspirated V12 engine with three electric motors. That makes this thing pretty damn fast. It can sprint from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just 2.5 seconds, and it has a top speed of more than 350 kilometers an hour. Not that you can ever drive that fast on Australian roads, but great for a track day. Now it's priced from 987,000 dollars when it lands in Australia but unfortunately if you want one you're looking at more than a two-year wait. We should start seeing these on Australian roads towards the end of 2024 so in the meantime come with me as I get up close and personal. Now by their own admission, Lambo worked really bloody hard to keep the V12 in this car, so they thought why not show it off. They have put it fully exposed in the rear here, so you can see it, and apparently already they're getting customer queries about, well, what happens if it rains? The official response on that is that the engine gets wet and it's all fine. The engineers have thought of that, you don't need to worry. Now one of the cool things on the V12 badge on the engine is that it's got uh, some digits and numbers down there, which I recently learned. It's not the number of the engineer, the mobile phone number, it's actually the firing order of the cylinder. So that's a cool factoid too, but it's a pretty impactful rear here. I particularly love the exhaust, which uh, straight out the back, like a jet. It's pretty wild. They're massive as well. So there's no fussing around here. You're not gonna have anything holding you back in terms of acceleration. And um, yeah, just in case people were questioning whether this car can go fast, pretty sure it can. I just love the fact that Lamborghini can take something as pedestrian as a fuel cap and just turn it into something super cool here. I love this. It even feels nice as well to the touch. Now I'm going to hop inside as well because finally we've got a clear moment. It's been a very popular car. I'm going to attempt to shut the doors, which I've not yet done on a Lamborghini before and I'm a little bit intimidated if I'm being honest. So come on, come with me. Right, this is lower to the ground than most of the mum SUVs I typically review. So just allow me to lower myself in Whoa, oh, and I've hit my head. I've done it already. Oh, one of the things I wanted to point out is the how wide these doors are. So they actually narrowed the door sill to provide ease of access on this car, but a lot of that uh, extra space has gone into the door here. So it's a nice thick wide door, which to my mind looks like it's gonna be really heavy. Um, I'll tell you whether it is or not. Let's give it a go. <laughs> and you know what? I always thought I'd have to reach up really high to pull this down. It's actually not too bad. It's doable. Oh, it's heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> Can I just say Lamborghini leather? I've never felt it before. It's gorgeous. It's so soft and nice. These tan leather seats are epic. I really love that you've got a little slot to store the key. Uh, the car is beeping at me. I think possibly because the battery's gone flat or something similar. I'm not quite sure, but please ignore the beeping. Um, basically, this cabin is a lot bigger than the Aventador. I think they got feedback, or I know they got feedback from customers saying that when they did track days, it literally couldn't fit in the car when they were wearing a helmet. It was too low. So I think they've increased the cabin space, uh, particularly the headroom for people. So you can be six foot tall wearing a helmet and still fit nicely in this car. It's actually not as cramped as I would have thought. There are three screens now. They've all turned off conveniently, but it's pretty cool. You can kind of move and toggle around the icons in the center screen over to the passenger side screen. Um, so you can have a bit more customization there. Also in a Lamborghini first, they've given you some way to put your phone. So it's just here. It's not a wireless charger, but previously uh, there wasn't really any storage in this car or on the Aventador, I should say. So they've decided to listen to customer feedback and give you some way to put your phone and your Balenciaga handbag in the back here. I've got to say, it's a pretty cool look out the back there, straight onto the V12 engine. It's really impactful. What have you? Now, obviously this is a plug-in hybrid car, but it can also charge the battery via the engine. So you're never gonna really be left without battery power. Now, obviously that means it can be driven in pure electric mode. There's a button here in the steering wheel, it says EV, and it activates what's called Citta mode or city mode in Italian, and that means pure electric mode. Hilariously, I think you can drive it at speeds of over 100 kilometers an hour, but only for around 10 kilometers or so. so I just like to think that that's, I like the visual of someone driving a super fast Lamborghini 
in silence for only 10 kilometers before it tops out and you become super noisy again. So maybe it would be good for a quick getaway. Otherwise, you've got a whole bunch of different drive modes and you know, really cool factoid, uh, depending on which drive mode you opt for, whether it's Chitta or the full performance modes, it raises and lowers the rear spoiler too. So you either become more aerodynamic or more low profile and under the radar. So I think that's really awesome. But yeah, I've actually got you know a fair bit of headroom. I'm used to uh, reviewing SUV, so I feel like I should call out the headroom. But really, if you're buying this car, do you really care? You don't. Now I'm gonna show you how to open the doors because I screwed this up last time. It's a push of the button and a push of the door at the same time. I thought they were automatic doors, so I pushed the button and got stuck in here like an idiot. It was very embarrassing for me. So push and lift. Ooh, that's pretty smooth, but you do need a little bit of elbow grease in there. Now it's perhaps not surprising that this car is proving pretty popular for Lamborghini. Apparently around 60% of the Rewelto buyers are first time Lamborghini buyers and that's a lot to do with the fact that it's pretty hard to get a V12 these days so they're kind of pulling shoppers away from other supercar brands and into the Lamborghini fold. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, make sure you let us know in the comments section. Hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of our new car content. And of course, head to drive.com.au for more information on the Revuelto. See you next time.